If you've heard about W18 in the past year, it has probably been with statements like this. Good evening, it's 100 times more potent than fentanyl and 10,000 times more potent than morphine. However, that description of the drug, despite appearing in supposedly reputable sources, simply isn't true. It has never been accurate to call the drug 100 times more potent than fentanyl, nor has it been accurate to call the drug an opioid. As of July 2016, we even have evidence showing it is not an opioid and should not be compared to drugs like fentanyl. Nevertheless, journalists have continued to spread false information and have seemingly avoided any bit of research. W18 is worth talking about in general, but I also also want to discuss the drug in order to demonstrate how unreliable most popular sources are when it comes to drug information. W18 is a drug that was developed in Canada in the 1980s as part of an investigation of potential pain relievers. Until fairly recently, the most information we had about its activity came from a 1984 patent. The document described how W18 could elicit a response on the phenylquinone writhing test. That test looks for potential pain relieving effects, but it's not selective, meaning it responds to many non-opioids that are not considered pain relieving. Even though its potency in this test was very high relative to morphine that was never meant to suggest it is actually more potent than morphine as a CNS depressant. The test does not reveal a drug's mechanism of action, and the drug's activity was not reported to be sensitive to naloxone, suggesting opioid receptors weren't involved. When this patent is examined, it merely shows W18 might have some action in mice, but it doesn't provide any mechanism of action. As we will see, this is far from how the drug has been discussed, even in the face of newer and more complete information. W18 appeared in Europe between 2013 and 2014, including during a seizure in Sweden in September 2014. It primarily caught the attention of the general public after it appeared in Canada in 2015. Let's take a look at some of the reporting that came before the drug's pharmacological examination. And now they say a new drug that's about the size of just a few sugar crystals could be enough to kill you. The Huffington Post said W18 is a powerful opioid considered up to 100 times stronger than fentanyl, and Vice called it 10,000 times more powerful than morphine. And in February 2016, the Canadian government referred to it as a synthetic opioid that may have a severe risk of overdose given its potency. By the time April came around, those with actual knowledge in this area began to respond. David Yerlink, a clinical pharmacologist, noted how claims about W18's potency were not supported. He stated, among other things, that the potency of W18 relative to fentanyl is unknown. A forensic toxicologist writing at Dose Makes Poison also noted that claims made about W18 could not be backed up by evidence. Despite these contributions from informed individuals, inaccurate reports kept pouring in, and law enforcement didn't help the situation. When discussing a possible W18 related fatality, authorities in Alberta described it as deadly, toxic, and potentially worse than fentanyl. Let me be clear, W18 and fentanyl are deadly and you will never know if it's hiding in the drugs you are taking. This is not a matter of if it will kill you, it is a matter of when. Uh, W18 is a uh, very toxic compound that may be far more toxic than fentanyl itself and we do not know. And the problem with W18 is that it takes a very minuscule amount um, to cause um, <clears throat> problems. On a separate occasion, authorities described it as 100 times more toxic than fentanyl. W18 is a synthetic opioid and it's reported to be 100 times stronger and more toxic than fentanyl. It's 10,000 times stronger than morphine. Theoretically, a four kilogram seizure of W18 could have produced hundreds of millions of illicit pills. In the media, The Fix called it a street drug that is 100 times more powerful than fentanyl, and the Washington Post opted to compare it to morphine, stating it is 10,000 times more potent. Had the reporters for these sites actually researched the drug, they would have known better. Not all of the reporting was bad at this time, however. One of the few good pieces came from David Kroll at Forbes. He gave a notably accurate description of the drug, stating, at present, we do not know if W18 is itself an opioid or whether it possesses 
addresses addictive or lethal risks like those of an opioid. As we entered May and June, when journalists had an even greater ability to understand W18, inaccurate reports continue to appear. The Independent, for example, called it a synthetic opiate that is psychoactive and similar to heroin, and Inverse decided to claim users were chasing the pill's euphoric, painkilling, and sedating effects. As to where they got those effects from, I'm not really sure. While it has always been wrong to call W18 an opioid or compare it to fentanyl, we didn't actually know what the drug was doing until a study appeared in July. Researchers comprehensively examined the drug and found it offered no detectable opioid receptor activity as an agonist or allosteric modulator. And even though it's extensively metabolized, none of the metabolites showed opioid activity either. Neither a tail flick test nor a writhing test in mice showed any activity, even with doses as high as one milligram per kilogram. There was some response to W18 in the form of an atypical tunneling behavior, but it wasn't affected by naloxone. With these examinations, it does not appear the drug functions as an opioid, nor does it provide clear pain-relieving effects in test animals. Some affinity for serotonin receptors, including 2A, 2B, 2C, and 6, along with benzodiazepine, sigma, A1 adenosine, alpha 2A adrenergic, and CB2 cannabinoid receptors was found. No activity was was reported at most of the targets, though some weak activity may exist at sigma receptors and the peripheral benzodiazepine site. W18 also showed activity connected to a potassium channel, which could put someone at risk for dangerous cardiac effects. How important this property is in humans is not known, but it is a property that's avoided in drug development due to the risks. Overall, the study showed that while W18 could have some activity, it is not an opioid and definitely should not be compared to opioids. Unfortunately, the media didn't get the message, and I've seen statements from members of the drug-using community suggesting they also still believe W18 is a very potent opioid. Like was seen earlier in 2016, one of the few good recent sources about W18 was Forbes, specifically with content from David Kroll. He reported on the W18 study and made it clear that the drug is not an opioid, but not everyone is satisfied reporting the facts. In August, EMS World called it a painkiller that is similar in strength to carfentanil. Due to its appearance in Australia in mid to late 2016, a new wave of inaccurate reports has appeared. One of the false articles in September came from Vice, which called it a heroin-like drug capable of producing an intense pain-killing euphoria, and the International Business Times really decided to push misinformation by calling it the deadliest drug in the world and one that can produce a high similar to heroin. These reports were made despite there being multiple ways for correct information to be obtained. One, you could look at the study itself and see what the experts are saying, and two, one of the first articles about the drug that appears in Google is the Forbes piece that explains how the other reports have been incorrect. It is not not hard to find accurate information, especially if you're a reporter. If you cannot do basic research on a drug, it is better to avoid writing about it. The takeaway here is that you should remain skeptical about any drug-related article or news clip you see. The drive to research things on your own is incredibly useful, especially in an area like drugs. It is unfortunate that journalists are so reliably unable to report correctly on this topic. By no means do you really need to understand drugs as a journalist to give an acceptable report. Rather, a minimal amount of legitimate background research can tell you at least enough to not completely screw up the story. Like in many areas, sensationalism in drug-related stories can potentially increase views, clicks, and discussion. And in the case of drugs, which are demonized by much of the population, few people are going to be skeptical of these reports. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. In order for the drug classroom to provide more education, support is necessary. And the best way to support is through Patreon at patreon.com slash the drug classroom. You can also contribute through YouTube, PayPal, or Bitcoin. You can connect with me on Twitter at Seth A. Fitzgerald and via email at seth at the drug classroom.com. Com.